right. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this session. And thanks uh, for Deidre for helping set this up. Um, I was on a hike a few weeks ago with Louise Stevens, my neighbor, who is an active Meta at Home uh, participant, and was talking about Jamie's Place and the greenhouse model that uh, Jamie's Place is based on. And she said, you know, I don't think a lot of people know about this greenhouse model. And um, that would be a great session for um, Met Out Home. And so we contacted Deidre and she was kind enough to set this up so we could educate uh, the community about this particular model. And we'll use Jamie's Place as an example of that model today. So today we want to do a few things. One is um, give you some background about the greenhouse model. Second, we'd like to show you a video of Jamie's Place, give you a little sense about how Jamie's Place is a manifestation of that model. And third, have some uh, Q&A with you about questions you may have about greenhouse um, or or about Jamie's Place. Um, I'm joined today by three other panel members, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves. But in a but first, I'd like to thank uh, Joanne Hinault, who's um, on our call. She's also a Jamie's Place board member, and Peggy Porter, who's on the call, who's also a, on the board at Jamie's Place. Um, so let's start with, uh, we've got uh, Raleigh, Jessica, and Sheila. Let's start with an order that we're gonna be speaking. So Sheila, do you wanna introduce yourself first? Uh, sure, thank you. I'm really excited and uh, appreciate being, uh, being able to participate in this and tell the story about Jamie's Place. Um, I'm Sheila Brandenburg. I'm a registered nurse and certified in hospice and palliative care. Um, currently working with Confluence Health and Palliative Care Initiative in Okanagan County. Um, <clears throat> but in 2006, I joined uh, Glenn Schmeck to work on the development of uh, Jamie's Place and Mountain View. And I worked there for 10 years. And it's been a, it was a big part of my life. Thank you. Thanks, Sheila. Thanks for, for joining us today. Jessica, do you want to go next? My name is Jessica Colzerud, and I've worked at Jamie's Place since 2012. Right now, I'm the acting administrator of Jamie's Place, and I'm happy to be a part of this. Raleigh, how about you? So I'm Raleigh Bowden. Um, I'm a physician, and I um, am the president of the board at Jamie's Place, and I'm also the COVID medical director um, to get us through these times. And my day job is I work for the Lookout Coalition, which is a volunteer health call practice. And I also am the director of the Okanagan Palliative Care Team and work on that with Sheila. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Raleigh. And I'm Joan Wellman. I'm a board member at Jamie's Place, and uh, before um, retiring, I worked in uh, as a management consultant in healthcare systems um, of all different types, and am uh, very excited and happy to be on the board at Jamie's Place. So with that, I think we'll dive into this question, and we've asked Sheila to give us a background on um, what the greenhouse model is and how Jamie's Place came to adopt it. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Sheila, to give us your your view of this. Okay, great. Um, one sec. I have a, one technical difficulty here. All right. So first, I want to tell you just a quick uh, story, um, and I promise it ties into how the greenhouse came to fruition. Uh, when I was 15, I was working for a local skilled nursing facility. And one day my job was to shower the patients. And so I'm wheeling this patient named Goldie down the hall. She's naked underneath this really thin sheet. 
and we're going down the length of the building to the shower. And I entered the shower room with Goldie and it's cold and it's stark. Um, it's a big room and the water was cold. So we had to wait for it to warm up. And I gave her her shower the whole time she was saying no, 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 no. And when we got done with the shower, I threw a warm towel on her and I started drying her off and covering her back up. And she started patting my cheek and telling me, thank you. And as I wheeled her back down to the hall, the hall to someone who was gonna dress her and take care of her for the day, I had this really profound thought that there had to be a better way. Now, the reason that I tell you that story is we fast forward many years, many, many, many years <laughs> later. And in 2006, I get a phone call from Glenn Schmeckel. I was working for Home Health and Hospice of Okanagan County at that time. And Glenn said, we have this idea and some property and we were wondering if you would help us set this thing up. So we had a couple of meetings and I really loved the idea but wasn't sure if I was the right person to be an administrator for something that had never been created. Um, but, but Glenn was very smart. He enrolled us in a um, educational offering with Bill and Jude Thomas down in LA, in, in California. So we flew down there together and the whole time I was on the plane, my only thought is how do I break it to this guy that I'm not gonna do this? And uh, we, we listened to Bill and Jude Thomas explain the greenhouse project and how it's different than traditional long-term care. And before he even got done talking, I think, I turned to, to Glenn and told him that, yes, I was all in. Because this was the fruition of that thought when I was 15 that there has to be a better way. Now, why is Jamie's place better? Why is the greenhouse put, uh, idea better? It, push, it puts the patient first. The patient gets to speak. The patient's voice is heard. They get to make decisions about their daily life and they are not told what they have to do constantly. I worked in many, many nursing homes throughout my career as a nurse. I've been a consultant, I've worked in home health, I worked in home care, I've worked in hospitals, but most places don't actually listen to the patient about how they wanna live their life. Um, Jamie's play, I was hired in 2006 and we opened our first building in 2007. And during that year, um, I spent learning and training and developing all the policies and procedures for how I could envision we take care of people. Jamie's place is different. Every patient has their own room. Every patient has their own bathroom. Families are welcome to come. Small children are invited. It's seamless from the inside of the building to the outside. <clears throat> So that people are allowed to go outside and um, do the things that they really, really love. I wanted to share with you uh, two small stories about patients. So when this idea was born, I just want to stop. Can you guys still see me and hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, my screen went blank, so then I was a little worried. <laughs> okay, um, I, there was a community member who was living alone. Um, a neighbor was her primary helper and would come and get her in and out of bed twice a day. Family was dropping by, providing meals. She was completely homebound. She could not leave home. And she was getting really good care, but she heard about what we were doing and she wanted in. She called me almost every single day to find out if we were open. She had a life prognosis at that time of probably one to two years. And she lived with us for almost seven. 
And so one of the questions her family often had is, why is she doing so well? My, my answer to that is, she had lots of interaction. Community members came in to visit her, books. She actually participated in virtual meetings with the business that she and her husband had founded and that her son was now running. She continued to be the board chairman, even from this home. She was able to eat what she wanted, have oversight of medical care. Um, she was an amazing um, example of how people can thrive in their older years. This, another example of what happens is we, we had several, while I was there, we had several patients who had what was decided as spontaneous fractures of their hips. Um, hip fractures are pretty common in older, uh, especially women, um, taking a wrong step they just twisted wrong, fractured their hips. They went to the hospital, had surgery. Stella, who did this, um, was 98 when she fractured her hip. She was gone from Jamie's place for three weeks, returned back to us for rehab. She never went to a skilled nursing facility, came directly back to us. They told us she would never walk. Within two months, she was walking and she lived just past her 100th birthday. She lived with us a total of four and a half years. <clears throat> it demonstrates the perseverance of the elders when they get to choose and, and live their life um, the way that they choose to do. Jamie's Place has a kitchen central in each home so that patients can um, give give orders basically for what they would like to eat, uh, smell the food cooking, watch the co food cooking, participate in cooking. They can participate in small chores, go outside. Lots of my residents uh, love to tend the garden, which typically meant picking the flowers, but um, being outdoors was really essential to many of our patients. Um, I want to switch tracks real quick and talk about something that is really present in our day, in today's uh, world, and that is the COVID-19 outbreak throughout the nation that really brought us all to our knees in many ways in the way in which we act. But one of the key things that it demonstrates for greenhouse projects in particular um, is that these smaller settings of having residents with dedicated providers um, and the ability to really control the environment, uh, statistically, the numbers have been pretty amazing. So one statistic I wanted to share with you is um, as of August 20th, nationwide in all licensed uh, skilled nursing facilities, there's been 188,000 954 cases of COVID diagnosed. Um, of that 44,215, um, uh, unfortunately, have passed away. However, in the greenhouse uh, project, when they did a study of 45 skilled nursing facilities, only 2,300 Hello? You okay? All right. yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. <clears throat> 2,300 uh, patients were diagnosed. Uh, 2,300 patients in those 45 homes, and only 32 patients uh, were diagnosed positive. And of that, only one death occurred in the skilled nursing facility. Assisted living greenhouse projects, only 266 diagnosed positive. Er, 266 patients, only 15 diagnosed positive with three deaths. And in what we're calling adult family home greenhouses, which is an example of what Jamie's place is, only 24, uh, excuse me, only, sorry, <laughs> 24 um, reported zero positive, zero deaths. At Jamie's place, 
we've been fortunate to have no diagnosed positives and no deaths. 95% of all skilled nursing facility um, and assisted living and adult family home of greenhouse projects, 95% of those facilities reported no COVID um, reported in their homes. So elders do best in facilities or homes where they get daily attention, medical oversight, medication management, reporting to families and physicians, family and community engagement and, and uh, relationships, um, the ability to move about freely, the ability to bring services in such as physical therapy, hospice, skilled nursing. Those are all of some of the key elements that are brought into Jamie's place. And the community involvement has been profound, um, bringing in activities such as music and uh, artistic work and conversations. Um, I've been really honored to be a part of Jamie's Place. It's a huge part of who I am now in my job and how I feel that people should be treated. And I appreciate the opportunity to spend time on um, this call with people who are doing the work currently. And with that, I'll turn it back um, to Joan. All right, thank you so much, Sheila. And we'll have a chance to ask questions um, of Sheila um, in a moment. But first, we'd like to show you a video that gets you inside of Jamie's place that, again, is uh, an example of the greenhouse model. So I am going to um, take our much practiced video sharing and make sh see if I can do it again. Here we go. Here we go. Sorry about this. When I think of Jamie's place, I think of honoring our elders. When I think of Jamie's place, I think of love and support. When I think of Jamie's place, I think of smiling. Of a community that cares for all of its members. Jamie's place is not just a home to go to at the end of life. Jamie's place is a home to go to to have a fulfilling life and be met right where you're at. Jamie's place is tops. Jamie's place is amazing. I honestly, I'm not trying to make this up, but it's, I can't think of anything I don't like about it. My name is Rilton Edge Evan. That's Dave Chandler spelled backwards. I had a couple of people who saw my predicament and said, how about Jamie's place? We sold my car and bought it, my gummobile. Jamie's place is innervating and enabling and there's probably not very many places in this country that, that would match that fit with a community. About 1998, the Cove began as the food bank, and one of our advisory board members was Jamie Finland, a longtime member of the community. She came to me and said, if I gave you my property, my inheritance, would you use that for these purposes that allow last me? That began the process of trying to find out what in our community was a need that hasn't been met. So I went to this conference called Eden Alternative, and Dr. Thomas presented his vision a greenhouse. The greenhouse model is a nationally recognized model in long-term care. It creates small, real homes that recognize the individuality of residents and honors their autonomy and their dignity. It's really catered to what the individual chooses and what their daily routine is like. An elder should be able to do what an elder wants to do. If they don't want to get up 
at seven o'clock in the morning, then they don't have to get up at seven o'clock in the morning. If they want to go outside and hang out and read a book, then they should be able to go out and read a book. And that's how it differentiates from traditional long-term care facilities who have regimented schedules. Staff are encouraged to participate in the daily lives of the residents, not just in the daily care of. Caregiving to me is enhancing an elder's life helping them to be able to live the most fulfilling life that they can and where they're at in their process. We all work together as a team to provide the best care possible. Well, they're fantastic. I mean, gosh, talk about being Johnny on the spot, take care of you. It's wonderful. The staff was real important to my dad. I know it was because he told me, he says, they really treat me good here. They kind of spoiled him. They really spoiled him. <laughs> Over the years, we've had over 70 elders here, along with family and friends as well. Every day you're gonna be challenged, moved, and laugh. We have impacted their lives, and they've truly impacted ours. When you leave every day, you have a good feeling in your heart that you're helping elders that need your care because they may not want to leave their house, but they have to. And so if you can make their quality of life better, it counts. My health deteriorated and my son made me an offer I couldn't refuse, <laughs> and because I came here, I didn't know a soul. I didn't know what I was walking into, and um, it's turned out better than I expected. I see my son at least once a week or twice a week. I told him I'm happy, and he says, I'm happy. <laughs> so we're both happy. One of the things that I see in my work as an RN is that as people age, they lose independence in their lives. And one of the important things that Jamie's Place offers residents is that they get to maintain independence in this special way, which is maintaining a sense of place here in the Met Hop Alley. You have a, not an institution, but a home. You know, a home where you can smell the bacon cooking for breakfast. You got your own private room, your private bathroom. You're meeting around the fireplace. You got your family that can come see you. Your grandkids that can get off the bus and come by and visit you. The children love going over and visiting Jamie's Place. They sing songs, share stories. They delight in each other's company. They truly enjoy each other. The impacts of Jamie's Place go out farther than just the residents and the, the families there. It really makes a difference in our community. My husband and I, we had a business in town. It would have been a big deal to transition away from our business and to take care of my mom. So when Jamie's Place opened, it was just the absolute perfect solution. My mom got to be a mom and I got to be a daughter. We didn't have to be a patient and a caregiver. This connection with the community is so incredibly important. People from the community continue to come in and be part of the lives of the people who are living here. I honestly, if I was gonna pick a place to put a family member or for myself to go it'd be here at Jamie's place, I would, of all the dozens of places I've been, I would pick here. There's a perception that if you do something like come to an adult family home or start to have more assistance or or need nursing in some way that you're somehow throwing in the towel. And that isn't really true. You're taking the next steps and taking them in your own control in some way of saying, you know, I do need help and this is a good way to get it. And it's a good way to get it while I'm still connected and I wanna still be connected. Show me a community that respects and cares for their elders and I'll show you a good place to live. I don't think people realize what we have here. This is my family now. I'm happy. I think we do enjoy each other's company and the repartees from sitting around the table and calling bad jokes. Show me a man with both feet on the ground, and I'll show you a man who can't take off his pants. <laughs> <laughs> This is not a place to come and die. This is a place to come and live in this season of life. All right. Well, um, I hope that gives you a little 
um, tour of Jamie's place um, without us unfortunately being able to all visit, which would was something we would have liked to do today. Um, with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. And uh, if you have a question, I think the best way is to either just raise your hand or if you are familiar with the Zoom, um, uh, I think there's a button on Zoom you can actually push, but just raise your hand, I can see you all. Or just speak up if you're not on video. And I did uh, mute everybody, so people will have to unmute themselves before they ask a question. Hopefully you know how to do that. <laughs> Well, I have a question. I'm just curious, how many of these greenhouse projects are there in the United States? Jessica or Sheila, can you take that one? I'm hoping that Jesse, I'm hoping Jesse has a current number because I haven't looked. I don't have the current number that I know on this side of the United States in, in Washington state, we are the only one. I don't have a current number on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can, Deidre, we could get you that answer and um, get it back to you. Okay, I was just curious. Thanks, and thanks for that question. Uh, there, there are several hundred, but we don't know the exact number. We'll, we'll definitely get that back to you. So I might po pose a question that might lead to some others. And I wondered if Jessica could answer this one, or at least start off and maybe others could add. And that is, how does the, uh, the, the experience of caregivers differ in the greenhouse model? than in more traditional models. Can you speak to that, Jess Jessica? The big difference is that caregivers in the greenhouse model feel empowered. They feel like they're really making a difference in the lives of the people that they're taking care of because they feel like they are able to know these elders so well that they know what they need. And the nurse and the caregivers work together and, it, and the nurse isn't like higher over the caregiver. The caregiver feels empowered to work with the nurse and be able to, to let her know what these people need because the, the Shabazz are the ones who know these elders the best. They're the ones who take care of them day in and day out. And they get to really know them to the point where they're part of their family. And just so for clarification, Shabazz is the, the term for caregivers in the greenhouse model. 